Hey guys, I'm here with a new budget MTG deck. Um, the other two I've done that you may have seen um, are the uh, Black Red Zombie deck and the uh, Conjurer's Closet deck. I think this deck's going to be more competitive than the Conjurer's Closet deck was, one was. That one was a lot of fun, but it ended up not really panning out as a competitive deck. Um, the Black Red Zombie one is a pretty competitive deck, um, and I think this one will be more in that vein of that in that sort of vein. And so what we have here is a Tempered Steel uh, Red-White deck. Um, you know, it's basically an artifact creature aggro deck. Um, as you can see, it has an incredibly low curve. Um, in fact, these guys, these Legionnaires could all go over here um, if they wanted to, and the Scourges could all go in the one-drop area for the Phyrexian Mana. But I'll just sort of go through the deck. It's made really around Tempered Steel. I mean, it doesn't need it to win, but it helps, you know, get over the hump um, when your opponent starts to try to stabilize with bigger creatures. You get Tempered Steel out there, and all your artifact creatures get plus two, plus two. Every creature in this deck is an artifact creature, as you might imagine. Um, we've got four Court Homunculi, um, you know, just a little one drop who gets to be a two, two, uh, as long as there's another artifact in play, which is going to be common in this deck. Um, in terms of other artifact creatures, we have two Ether Sworn Canonists, um, which is just a two mana, two, two, and it can help, you know, stop various decks from doing what they want to do and playing multiple spells. I have two in the sideboard here, too, as you can see for opponents where it's even more important. We've got Vault Scourge, who's just really good. You know, he's, I usually play him for one mana and two life, and he's flying and lifelink, and if he gets Tempered Steel on him, he starts gaining me a lot of life, or Cranial Plating, which is here too, as you can see. Um, other creatures is Glenhawk Idol, which is basically a creature. Um, it's a two mana artifact, and as you can see, whenever another artifact enters the battlefield, it becomes a 2-2 two -two flyer, and I can also just play one, pay one white to make it a 2-2 two -two flying artifact creature. Um, and then there are three Porcelain Legionnaires, who's basically a two-mana 3-1 with first strike. Um, and then we have Etch Champion, um, you know, who's the Metalcraft guy who gets uh, protection from all colors when I have Metalcraft, which will happen pretty often. Um, and the cards we have in here that aren't creatures are things like Galvanic Blast, which, you know, is just a shock unless you have Metalcraft, in which case it's, you know, better than Lightning Bolt. It'll do four. And Dispatch, which... It, taps a creature, and then if you have Metalcraft, it exiles a creature. This deck gets Metalcraft pretty easily. Um, we've got a lot of artifact creatures. And then on top of the creatures, we also have Cranial Platings, four of them, you know, which is basically a must for a deck like this, um, you know, because you need, you know, it helps you finish the game too, especially on a Vault Scourge. Um, we've also got four Dark Steel Citadels. Um, so our deck really has, you know, a large number of artifacts, and Metalcraft's pretty easy to obtain. Um, uh, so, yeah, and I also have one Banishing Light, um, just sort of as a catch-all removal if I need it, and three Lightning Helixes just because, you know, they're really good, and we're in those two colors, so may as well be running them. It's a good removal spell. We can also just burn our opponent out in the late game. Um, you know, if, say, we do a bunch of damage to them early, which this deck can do very easily, um, but then they clear the board or something, we can then rely on, like, Galvanic Blast and Lightning Helix to finish our opponent off. Um, in terms of lands, we've got four Battlefield Forges, um, and four Cliptop Retreats, four Citadels, four Plains, and four Sacred Foundries. Um, so, you know, it's a pretty good mana base. We only need 21 lands in this thing because our curve's so low. And like I said, it's even lower than it looks because the Scourge could go in the one slot, the Legionnaires could go in the two slot. Um, so we really don't have a whole lot of, um, uh, you know, threes as high as we go, and we really only have uh, nine three drops. Um, I'll talk about the sideboard a little too. We have another dispatch. Um, I only run two main board because there are enough players who just don't run enough creatures uh, or, you know, worth dispatching. Galvanic Blast and Lightning Helix are good enough against their creatures that, you know, we don't really always need three in the deck, but I have a third. We've got Disenchant for the Affinity matchup. Um, unfortunately, we can't run, you know, like a big board clearer like Granulate because it'll blow up our whole board too. That's kind of one of the downsides of this deck. Two more Aether Sworn Cannonists. They're good against... Um, control and they're good against um storm so i bring in a full four of them uh when i need them whip flare which is just like a really like if you're playing an artifact deck it's just a really good uh spell for you to use it's a one-sided pyroclasm basically in this deck um it deals with all the collected company decks pretty effectively um then we have two ghost quarters to deal with both amulet bloom and tron and we have three Phyrexian Revokers um, to sort of work as Stony Silence, also against Affinity, but it's also good against, you know, any, a number of other decks. Um, you can shut down, you know, Tron's Karn and things like that, um, so it's a pretty, pretty powerful card to have in there. I'm thinking about whether or not I'd rather have Pithing Needle. Um, 
I mean, this deck tries to be really aggressive, so having a body, you know, that can carry um, cranial plating and, and um, tempered steel buffs uh, is pretty important, but um, we'll see what happens. So I'm going to do a little bit of testing with this deck as it stands now. Um, there are a few cards that I'm sort of thinking about adding. The most recent uh, Met set that came out, Magic Origins, has Chief of the Foundry, and I'm kind of considering adding him, although I think he may be too expensive. I mean, he's not as good as that champion, that much is clear. He may just be too high on the curve for this deck, since, you know, um, we don't want a bunch of three-drop creatures. Um, but I'm thinking about him, and I was thinking about the Pithy Needle as well. I'm going to test this deck a little bit. Um, I'll probably play three games, three matches with it that you'll see. Then I'll make some changes to it, and then I'm just going to jump into a modern tournament, um, which you'll see uh, probably, you know, the week after you see the first three videos. So we'll just see how this deck goes, uh, and I think it's pretty good. I've tested it already some, made some changes to it already, but I think it's at the point where I you know, want to be recording it. Um, and the deck's pretty cheap to make, that's why it's you know, budget MTG. Um, it costs $38.50 um, on Magic Online, as you can see here, and it's a pretty good deal. Um, and a lot of that, a lot of that is <laughs> the Four Sacred Foundries. Um, so if you're trying to go even more budget with this deck, where there they are. Yeah, that's $18.60 is our Sacred Foundries, so... Um, without them, the deck is can even more budget, um, but I think the deck needed it so that we could always have double white for our tempered steel and make sure we have red often enough. Um, but yeah, so that's the deck. Uh, let me know what you think about the deck, changes you would make to it. Um, I think it's going to be pretty competitive. It'll be fun uh, playing it against some tier one decks, uh, which you'll see uh, in the same playlist as this video. So thanks for watching, and uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment.